for all of the people who have come to t attend the Jalsa Salana. In some cases, people who have come met many times before, and in some cases, who, who have not come before. Nazir Kiram, is what you are seeing in front of you, the Prophet has been here, and after that, 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 لوائے احمدیت کے لہرانے کی تقریب شروع ہونے والی ہے تو ہم آپ کو لیے چلتے ہیں تقریب میں السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ Mustafa, 
اسلام احمدیت اسلام احمدیت غلام احمد کی غلام احمد کی This afternoon, we are honoured to have a member of uh, the UK Parliament, Stephen Hammond, uh, MP. Stephen has been a member of Parliament since 2005 and represents uh, Wimbledon, uh, which includes Bethel Fatou Mosque. Stephen has many roles and recently was the Minister of Transport in the government. He is a very close friend of the community and has spoken on a number of events for many years. Stephen has also served as the Vice Chair of the All Party Parliamentary Group of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community. He is a man of principle and always been willing to offer his help in local and national issues. I would like to welcome Stephen and request him to come and say a few words. Your Holiness, the Convention, since I stood and said a few words last year, the world has become a more difficult place, and so your Jalsa this year is even more important than it is as ever. The world has see sees conflict in a number, of, uh, a number of regions and a number of countries, conflict which spreads uh, disharmony amongst nations, amongst communities and amongst religions, and conflict that hurts and kills civilians. So the message of your community, love for all, hatred for none, is even more important, and it's even more important that it should be heard throughout the world uh, now than ever before. We must all work together to ensure that the world lives in peace. We must all work together to ensure that people can live in safety uh, and feel safe. And therefore, the work that your community does, does both here in the UK, uh, I as a Member of Parliament for Wimbledon know exactly the work the community does in my local community, but in local communities across the world, spreading not only the message but also practical help is hugely important. And this year, uh, this year I think it's even more important that the message of peace should ring out from this jalsa. Thank you very much indeed. Talawat Quran Kareem, Gorham Abdul Momin Tahir Sahib. Assalamu alaikum. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim ترحمون وسارعوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم وجنة أرضها السماوات والأرض أعدت للمتقين الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء 
والكاظمين الغيظ والكاظمين الغيظ والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين والذين إذا فعلوا فاحشة أو ظلموا أنفسهم ذكروا الله ذكروا الله فاستغفروا لذنوبهم ومن يغفر الذنوب إلا الله ولم يصروا على ما فعلوا وهم يعلمون أولئك جزاؤهم مغفرة من ربهم وجنات تجري وجنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها ونعم أجر العاملين وهده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين يا لقد جاءكم رسول من انفسكم عزيز عليه ما نتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف الرحيم لعلك باخ نفسك لا يكون وما ارسلناك الا رحمه للعالمين ان ayat ka tarjuma ye hai rahim huzur says that the translation of these verses is that certainly a prophet has come unto you from among you and he dislikes very much if you suffer and he is very keen for your betterment and he is gracious and merciful to the for the believers and uh, having showing his mercy again and again are you going to kill yourself in this grief that these people do not believe and uh, and we have sent you a uh, but as a mercy personified for the whole of mankind Rega- uh, as opposed to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in is against all that foul language that has been used and which is used these days and this is and this uh, practice is continuing that uh, <coughs> from the beginning of mankind till today against islam and against the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his personality 
uh, all these uh, wicked weapons which have been used against him which are being used and uh, these uh, uh, you know these attacks of dis for disgracing him which are being used that is unparalleled in history and this example is not to be found in the history of any other prophet and the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who was a pers mercy personified and he, he will remain in this position till the end of the time and against him these people who are making use of falsehood those who are throwing filth and dirt upon him and this effort has uh, these people are making that has never been made against any other prophet uh, even the filth literally it was thrown upon him on several occasions and he was tortured on many occasions and so that uh, the people may feel some sort of satisfaction of their heart and false uh, allegations and accusations were brought against him against him and his beloved one Uh, so that the people could be put off from him and uh, his uh, status and his uh, position should be disgraced and then uh, up till today those people who have written against the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they are piling up the books against him so that uh, the person of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the shariat brought by him Uh, and his ummah they all should be put to uh, defame so the uh, enemies for the last uh, nearly 1500 years uh, they are throwing filth upon his person and sometime throwing filth on the teachings of islam and sometime uh, they are describing islam as the religion of uh, aggression and intolerance and uh, uh, and in this way they are according to their thinking they are trying to uh, put off the people from the message of islam but despite all these things islam according to the promise of allah almighty is making progress even today despite the fact uh, that these uh, opponents and uh, and the anti islamic propaganda on the media uh, the the previous prophets they were opposed during their lifetime but when they passed away from this uh, world then this opposition stopped at that point and their religions they became like a traditional faith and religion and uh, sharia of no one remained in its uh, original p position and status nor the book is there in its original form and shape and nor in the in the book of sharia from the person from the founder prophet it has been mentioned that it has been appointed by allah it was only the person of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who was given this promise in allah almighty gave the promise of the safety and security of the book revealed upon him which is uh, uh, even after the 1500 years it is absolutely secure and safe so therefore the after the lapse of the 1500 years uh, 15 centuries of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is the proof of the fact that the sharia brought by him is going to stay there forever and the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a living prophet as he was the living prophet before 1400 years and till the end of the time he is the living prophet and his sharia is going to remain a, a living sharia till the end of the time because allah almighty has taken the protection of this sharia into his own hand so the opponents of islam in spite uh, instead of uh, uh, instead of uh, uh, throwing allegations against the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if they act justly then uh, if uh, there are some muslims and some groups of muslims are there who are trying to defame islam or those who are uh, Uh, enabling the anti-islamic people to raise their finger against islam then uh, this also is the proof of the truth of islam because allah the almighty uh, uh, told us in advance and the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also told us that uh, the degradation which is a part of uh, human life uh, that is going to affect the muslims as well after some time and then it will remain for a long time but despite that the sharia 
which in the form of the Holy Quran, which was brought by the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that will remain the the same intact as it was in the in the beginning, and also this is the promise that in the period of latter days, uh, from Allah Almighty, a, a great lover of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. A true follower of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will be raised. He will uh, uh, he will link the people of the latter days with the people of the first age, and uh, and that person uh, he would be he would be presenting the beautiful face of the teaching of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this thing will uh, dumbfound all the opponents, and he would be against the. Uh, against everybody who is attacking Islam, he will uh, pile up the arguments against them, and the enemies will be frustrated and defeated. And we are witness to the fa fact that 125 years ago we saw this uh, uh, example that uh, in the reply to the allegations against the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the reply to these allegations was given by that stalwart uh, of Allah. With such strong arguments, the reply was given that uh, the opponents, anybody who came, he they had to leave the uh, battlefield and run away. And uh, today, this community appointed by this stalwart of Allah is the one which is not only giving a reply to the these enemies and dumbfounding them, uh, making them speechless, but also they are spreading the message of Islam in the world. Zur says that uh, some Muslims, their self-made uh, uh, teachings and their interpretation, these are not the arguments of the fact that Islam and uh, the teaching of the Holy Prophet sallam, was a teaching of terrorism and extremism. In every nation, selfish people are there, and those people who are always thinking about their own benefit, such people are always there. These are the doings of those things who for their selfish ego and uh, object personal uh, objectives uh, they have this desire and these are the th things of those uh, those who want to have their personal benefits and they follow those people they are doing it because of lack of knowledge and ignorance the real teaching as i as i have said is the teaching of uh, beauty and uh, beneficence in order to show which in this age allah almighty has sent a, a great lover of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been raised, who is the promised Messiah and who is the Imam Mahdi, and he had the status. So today the Jamaat Ahmadiyya uh, is actually presenting the true picture of Islam, and for this purpose they are very active all over the world. Our objective is not to capture the governments of the world. Our objective is that the true teachings of Islam, according to that. Uh, uh, to in order to make the people the true uh, worshippers of Allah and our objective is not to gather the wealth of the world our objective is that following the example of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, to love the mankind and to do the for the benefit our objective is is not sh to show the examples of terrorism and to kill the innocent ladies and children or to kidnap them and ho take them hostage but our purpose is that the teaching brought by the Holy Prophet Sallallahu and according to his noble example, we have to show them the examples of his uh, mercifulness. And uh, this is not uh, uh, confined to a certain people, but all the people living on any on this planet. And for every creation of Allah Almighty on this planet, this extends to all of them. So those people who, without understanding the real thing, those who attack the Islam and the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and uh, uh, through their allegations and whatever they say,
and in order to dumbfound them and to make them speechless that is the responsibility of all, every Ahmadi we have to tell the whole world that on this uh, surface of the earth uh, neither before the birth of the Holy Prophet وسلم, nor after him there was anybody or will be there who, uh, who would be the mercy of uh, Allah Almighty for the whole of mankind these verses which I have just recited in that uh, Allah Almighty has mentioned the mercifulness and the mercy which is the teaching of Islam and in these teachings uh, Allah Almighty has mentioned that noble example of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu uh, which was uh, demonstrated by him because of his anguish and uh, keen passion of uh, goodness for the mankind this was example for everyone and this was the feeling of his uh, mercifulness which is spreading peace everywhere. Allah Almighty says, لَقَدْ جَاكُمْ رَسُولٌ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْكُمْ Certainly a prophet has come from unto you uh, and it uh, is very, uh, very difficult for him uh, if, if you suffer for anything. And then Allah Almighty says that not only this much, that He does not like uh, yourself to suffer any pain, but uh, uh, it is not only that uh, that uh, He is uh, feeling un, uh, un uh, uh, He is very much unrest, uh, peaceful that you are going to suffer for that and you are going to destroy this life and the life to come, and only this thinking is not the cause of His pain. Rather, he is harisun alaykum bil mu'minin ar-ufrahim, and he is very keen, very zealous for your betterment. And if he if he conveys the message of his love and affection, it is not for the achievement for his selfish shame. Rather, it is only for your interest, for your benefit. And the preaching of this messenger is only for this reason: that oh, non-believers, disbelievers you come into uh, under the teaching of Allah Almighty so that you may be able to understand the mercy and the uh, graciousness of Allah Almighty because Allah Almighty is most gracious so despite uh, the fact that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was made the target of the persecution at the hand of the disbelievers he was deprived from the uh, facilities of the life and his uh, beloved one they were put to torture and they were killed and even they planned to kill the Holy Prophet Sallallahu and wars were imposed upon him. But this Prophet, who was, per, who was personified love and kindness and affection, despite all that, O oh believers, uh, he is always wishing uh, some good thing for you. And Haris means that uh, person that if somebody suffers and then attains something, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during his lifetime, uh, he was uh, bent upon even killing himself or put him to that state uh, and uh, and uh, after suffering the uh, loss of uh, himself and uh, the loss of his companions there was only one hope and one intention was there that these opponents of Islam these people uh, may be able to get the uh, goodness in some way the heart of the Holy Prophet وسلم, for the whole of mankind it was so much filled with mercy and love that the example of that we cannot see every anywhere in the world first uh, after mentioning the non-believers then uh, towards the end it is mentioned in the first verse that I recited Allah, Allah Almighty is mentioned regarding the believer that by looking at the distress of the believers he feels the pain of that and he turns back to them again and again so those uh, these uh, unjust people, when they describe the examples of the intolerance of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and uh, they try to uh, kindle the flames of hatred and enmity against the Holy Prophet and Islam, uh, his condition was that he was even feeling himself uh, uh, restless at the anguish, at the anxiety and the suffering of these people and filled with the passions of love and affection and kindness he was uh, t giving them the glad tiding uh, of uh, a compassionate messenger coming uh, to them from Allah Almighty and normally the people they have the sentiments, feelings of sentiments to their uh, relatives but they are not so passionate and keen for the welfare of the enemies 
and for their sake they don't uh, lose their night sleep and so that they, he may protect uh, them from the punishment of Allah Almighty so this is the lesson there is a lesson in it for the Muslims whether they are rulers or they are divided into various groups or their uh, self-styled Islam they want to impose that instead of uh, injustice and uh, unjust behavior you should explain they should explain the beauty of Islam and they should be kind to those people who are uh, believing and reciting Kalema and uh, inquire about that uh, repeatedly and uh, the so this is also a one example of the kindness and compassion of this uh, prophet uh, which is he is the representation of Allah Almighty and Allah Almighty accepted his prayers and Allah Almighty has not deprived the people from those blessings which uh, were attached with the Holy Prophet rather until the last day this uh, uh, this uh, compassion uh, this compassion and uh, peace and harmony that is going to continue till the end of the time and uh, by doing so uh, Allah Almighty has made the arrangement of the re rebuttal to all these allegations uh, for all times and by sending the Holy Prophet the promised Messiah Islam, while Allah Almighty made this uh, blessing continuous then he also uh, Allah, he also refuted this point that Islam is a religion of terrorism. The, he described the noble character of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu and those people who tried to defame the character of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu he was made speechless. Those who used to allege that he was a barbaric and a, a believer in terrorism. In the Holy Quran it is mentioned and also uh, from the noble example of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu he explained, the promised Messiah Islam explained that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu for his own people and for the other people he was mercy personified and today those people who claim mercy and uh, kindness and those people who seek uh, kindness for uh, their own people but uh, those people who do not wish this thing for the other people so uh, these these Hamas and uh, and the battle between Hamas and Israel. Do you see the examples of that? After the bombardment from Israel, uh, hundred, hundreds of children they were killed, and there was no there was no uh, expression of uh, kindness for them. And if there was one child killed in uh, in the uh, in Israel, uh, the uh, the prime minister declared that we are going to take the revenge. Now it is good by the grace of Allah. Now the situation is moving towards betterment. But anyway, he said that we will not take rest unless we take the revenge. And when they take revenge, that is limitless. And there is no bound to that. And we don't say that this killing of this child is justified, who, who killed as a result of the firing of Hamas people. Hazrat and the Holy Prophet ﷺ was so kindness and so uh, kind and uh, full of compassion that in the battle no lady, no child, even uh, even a man who does not take part in the battle should not be killed because it is injustice. So, so in Islam and in the, in the Holy Prophet ﷺ, he declared injustice as inju injustice from whomsoever it comes. But the purpose of saying is that uh, those people who raise this criticism against Islam, they do not see it their own situation. They commit uh, injustice upon injustice, but there is no courage in anybody to raise a voice against this injustice. But uh, the, our beloved Rasul, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu he was showing the manifestation of his love and affection and compassion for these people. Hazrat Masih Maudu says on one occasion, in Ejazul Masih he says, Fashar Allah fi kolehi, And that means that uh, in this uh, hadith, in this verse, Allah Almighty, in the word of Haris and Rahim, He has pointed out that the Holy Prophet ﷺ, by the grace of Allah, He was the manifestation of the attribute of Rahman, 
because uh, his person was mercy for the whole of mankind for human beings for animals for the believers for the non believers and then it is mentioned in it for bil mu'minina raufur rahim that he was uh, rahman and rahim for the believers so this is the beauty and the beneficence of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam its manifestation which was the uh, which has been explained by the greatest lover of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the holy quran this was the noble example which allah almighty has mentioned in the holy quran this was the manifestation of that and this is the teaching which is for such a, for such people who who attribute himself to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that they should act upon that hazrat musi maud alaihi salatu wassalam says that the quranic teaching gives us this lesson that the pious people and the righteous people you love those people and be kind to Uh, even the non-believers, uh, Allah, ta- Allah, Allah Almighty says, "Azizun Allah ma nitum," that this oh believe non-believers, this prophet is some uh, is someone who cannot see you in uh, uh, in distress, and he is very uh, gracious and kind to the believers, and uh, and this uh, determination is given uh, to such a person when he comes under the uh, protection of Allah Almighty, then. in the kindness and welfare of the people he feels his soul restless and our beloved holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this status uh, he was far advanced than any other prophet of the world he could not see the mankind in distress allah almighty says azizun alaihi ma nitum that this prophet cannot see you in distress and this is very difficult for him to bear that and he is always keen that you should be that you should uh, get great benefits so this is this is the noble example of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam which is the need of the time which is guarantee of the peace of the world for the peace of the world and allah almighty has not said that uh, simply to remove the difficulties of the people he is very um, restless about that but uh, <coughs> allah almighty has mentioned the high strength of this uh, restlessness that uh, فَلَا اللَّهَ كَبَاخِهُ النَّفْسَ كَلَّا يَكُونُ مُؤْمِنِينَ That are you bent upon killing yourself in this grief that why these people do not become believers? That is to say that uh, is your heart is uh, without any uh, is not at peace because of the fact that uh, these people are uh, getting the wrath of uh, Allah Almighty and they are not going to believe that. So this love for mankind. is the standard of the mercy of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this was the anguish and pain in his heart and this is the this concern and this is the mercy and the grief that why this message of peace which uh, which uh, the message which uh, brings the people close to allah almighty uh, why uh, committing by committing uh, aggression against these people they are uh, going closer to this wrath of allah almighty and they are inviting the punishment of allah almighty and so much uh, desire was there for the help of the people that the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to become absolutely restless and allah almighty says that are you going to kill yourself put into yourself in death in the grief that these people they do not accept uh, the message of peace and uh, Baha, uh, the meaning of that is that you put the knife on your neck in such a way that it goes to the end. It says that the kindness and the mercy for the people, for the mankind, in order to protect them from the punishment of Allah Almighty, have you gone to this extent that you are bent upon slaughtering yourself? And the people, when they offer the sacrifices, they do it for their uh, close relatives and for their people. But it is the outstanding feature of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. that uh, his uh, his uh, anguish and pain in his heart for the opponents for those who were non believers he was even um, uh, without any peace uh, for their sake uh, uh, if uh, if he had a little bit of uh, feeling that uh, these people are going to suffer the wrath of allah almighty uh, then he would uh, uh, pray to allah almighty allahumma de qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamun allah give guidance to these people because the, these people do not know so this demonstration was not given by noha nor by ibrahim nor by hazrat musa nor by jesus christ because these feelings for the benefit of man for the benefit of mankind were not shown by any prophet 
and uh, his passions were uh, were for his companions for his followers and his very um, uh, very outstanding companions it was not only for those people but even for those people who were who tortured him utwa shaba and uh, abu jahl he had the same compassion and kindness for these people these were the people who played leading part in uh, bringing hardship upon him and the people in taif they actually um, he, he they uh, stoned him to that uh, extent that his own body was covered in blood and when the angel came uh, came that uh, he immediately his uh, passions and his feelings they overpowered him and he said no i don't want these people to be killed and he he used to wipe his uh, blood from the, his wounds and he used to pray that these people do not know who i am so you please uh, forgive these people and all these tortures they continued throughout his life but his feeling of love and kindness that always superseded and overpowered and uh, this uh, continued to increase all the time uh, the passion which he had for the benefit of mankind he realized that uh, from uh, by coming from allah almighty and to acquire a, in believing in that guidance which has come from allah almighty actually lies the salvation of mankind <coughs> in the battle of ohad and his uh, uh, his uh, feeling for the uh, for the enemies that has been recorded in history when he fell down after he got injured and uh, some muslims who were standing around him for his protection and some of them uh, they died and some uh, injured they uh, they fell upon him and at that time it was considered that perhaps uh, the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he has also uh, passed away but uh, when his body was uh, uh, he was uh, brought out of those uh, dead bodies and uh, and at that time he also uh, give this uh, a uh, prayer that tabbik fir likomi fa innahum la ya'lamun that oh my allah these people do not know they do not know my reality so you forgive them so at uh, even to forgive uh, the people at this time is anybody else can do like that it was only his status that he did it and uh, still these people these people are the blind people they their eyes are blind their hearts are blind they do not see any mercy Uh, uh, for the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in the uh, journey of Taif, in order to preach the message of Islam, is also recorded in history. When he was uh, covered in blood, uh, when he he went to take refuge in a, in a garden nearby in an orchard, <coughs> and when he saw him in this condition, and then he had this feeling of uh, a kindness and love uh, for him, so he sent. Uh, some uh, grapes uh, um, uh, through a servant uh, to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, he was uh, not a free slave rather it was usama uh, uh, he was zaid and when he came with these grapes to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when that uh, uh, person came and then when he realized that uh, this man is from nenawa and uh, this uh, uh, that uh, that you are from the town of my brother uh, yunus jonas and uh, and uh, that is the link so what was the link between the pe- person living in mecca and the uh, uh, nenawa and uh, then he said that you are uh, c- coming from the country of uh, jona and those people who are sent by allah almighty this is the reaction shown by the people for him and he did not uh, consider this thing that at this time i am on a hostile land and as a result of this uh, preaching i may become the victim of more hardship and torture he said that uh, uh, he said that i have not done any wrong to these people i simply say that you come to allah and stop the worship of idols so that allah almighty should show the mercy at that uh, at that point uh, by listening to that this christian slave he realized that he is from allah almighty so he started wiping the dust and the blood from his feet and he kissed his hand and his uh, uh, master was seeing all that from distance 
and when he went back to the master he was scolded by him and he said that uh, i simply is it uh, asked you to take those uh, graves but this slave by that time had already believed in the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam despite his own pain um, the passion of kindness and love this was uh, something which created the love in the heart of that slave now this love could not be separated by the worldly people so this was the feeling and of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wherever possible he conveyed the message of allah and for the welfare and the uh, peace for the mankind this was the keen desire and anguish in his heart so as i said that uh, we do not see this type of feelings and sentiments even in the life of any other prophet in uh, matthew chapter 15 verse uh, 24 to 26 it is written that a lady came to jesus christ and uh, she said that you help me and give me the same thing which you give to the people uh, he said that i do not have anything for you because i have been sent to the people of israelites and it is not right that the food for the children should be thrown to the dogs but to look at the mercy of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the limitless love which he had for mankind a person comes to him when he himself was uh, covered with injuries and at that time normally people take care of themselves and that person was from a, a <coughs> hostile a nation so he uh, forgot his own injury and pain and he started preaching to that man and he he st- he gave him the spiritual bread and food which he bring not only for his own people but uh, his passion of love and uh, affection was extending to the whole mankind and black and white and everybody he he was uh, uh, conveying this goodness to all these people and uh, and uh, after receiving this physical food uh, the slave came to him in order to uh, get some reward for that <coughs> and uh, and the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave him such food in reply to that in response to that which was going to be good for him for all times and this is how he gave goodness to everybody and this kindness to mankind hazrat masih maud alaihi salatu wasalam has described the feeling of that by saying that this is worth remembering he says that on one side the prophets and the those who are sent by allah almighty they are having no attachment with the with the world and on the other side they have got so much love for the man, for the mankind that they put themselves into hardship and danger even to the point that they are about to lose their life when the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam regarding him when allah almighty says la allah ka baqi un nafsa ka allah yakunu mu'minin that uh, what a compassion has been mentioned allah almighty has mentioned that uh, as these people are not believing in the fame are you feeling so much grief that you are almost uh, on the verge of uh, uh, slaughtering yourself that shows that how much uh, these messengers uh, increase in their love and kindness this is not to be seen elsewhere so much that not even in mother parents or other relatives this kindness is not to be seen and then he says that it is essential for the prophets to come along with his coming there is a spiritual power and uh, in the uh, and his heart is filled with the love for the mankind and kindness and regarding the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says la la kan baqi un nafsa ka allah yakunu mu'minin that are you going to slaughter yourself in this uh, in grief that these people are not going to accept there are two aspect of that one is regarding the non believers why don't they become muslims and uh, secondly regarding the muslims that why they do not have this type of high a spiritual power in them <coughs> which he finds in himself as the progress is gradual so therefore the progress of the companions they have, that was also gradual it took place like that but the structure the form of the hearts of the prophets is like that <coughs> that uh, uh, they always filled with the love and the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was having this goodness to the maximum point and to the highest point he was filled with the love and uh, by looking at the companions he always wished 
that all the progress and all the development should be t should be there in the in the lives of the companions so eventually the companions f uh, found that thing which nobody else found and the world saw that which nobody was able to see elsewhere so this was the thing uh, this was the manifest manifestation of the kindness and mercy of the highest order and uh, the person personified was the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that being was uh, in his kindness in his uh, uh, generosity in his uh, love and affection uh, he became like an authority in that so this is that prophet prophet of mercy who was mercy for his own people and he used to put himself into hardship for those who believed him and also for those people who did not believe him uh, the, there are so many examples of his sirat his noble character when he suffered himself but he did not pray he did not pray against it allah yakunu mu'minin la allah ka baqiun nafsa ka allah yakunu mu'minin so that love and affection and kindness has been mentioned that this prophet is so much filled with the love and affection for the people that he is even ready to sacrifice his life and uh, he suffers during the uh, during the day he suffers he he suffers this uh, torture during the day so then and still despite that and he is uh, uh, in great concern about the welfare of these people and when the night comes then out of this passion and grief he is uh, praying he was not even mindful of his uh, food and drink if there was concern that was only this much that the whole world uh, should be saved from the wrath of allah his worship uh, for the uh, for the benefit of the mankind that sometime his used to, his feet used to swell he used to stand so long and sometime uh, some of his wives they might uh, say they realized that when his uh, prostration was so long that perhaps he has passed away so this anguish and pain which he showed for mankind he wanted that by establishing the relationship with allah almighty the his believers his followers they should also attain that status they should also say, attain the same status and everything should be sacrificed for the sake of allah almighty so then the whole world saw that there was an army of the companions of such people that at night time they used to get up and pray for the benefit of mankind and for the welfare of mankind and in order to save them from the punishment of allah almighty they also had the same desire as hazrat musim udra salat uslam has mentioned la allah ka baqiun nafsa ka that there are two aspects of that one is for the non believers that they should reform and one is for the believers that they should also have the spiritual power in them and as i have told you that the companions uh, they attained such status which uh, uh, he wanted and then in order to create this passion till the end of the time uh, the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, was uh, Uh, allah almighty gave him the uh, message uh, promise that uh, in the period of latter days a promise messiah is going to come so that this uh, system of passion compassion for the mankind should continue and those people who are defaming islam they should be shown <coughs> the real picture of islam the beautiful picture of islam and such people should there be there all the time those who are showing the true picture of uh, islam and uh, this is what uh, he showed throughout his lifetime and then he also infused the same spirit among his companions those who also uh, did the work of the betterment and the salvation of the people and then the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then this concern for the welfare of mankind in order to remove that allah almighty sent the promised messiah alaihi salatu wasalam made the promise that he will be coming in this age and the purpose was that he was created as the mercy personified allah almighty said that wa mar salna ka illa rahmatan lil alamin that uh, we have sent you uh, but uh, as a mercy for the whole of mankind so when the nature of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his nature was made a mercy complete mercy and the same spirit was infused in the hearts of the his companions 
So then if that was the case, then why shouldn't he be filled with the love of mankind? And uh, this uh, attribute of Rahmaniyat, the merciful, it was so much infused in his heart that uh, in no human being we can find any example of that. If a example nearer to the point can be found, that was in the person of the Holy Prophet ﷺ himself. That uh, attribute of Allah Almighty was uh, personified in the example of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. So he was the sum total and all inclusive of all this uh, manifestation of Rahmaniyat and all aspects of that. He was mercy for all the people, for all nations, for all times. And uh, for his believers, he was totally total mercy and also for his non-believers, for his opponents. As I said, that he was profusely injured, even in that state when the companions thought <coughs> that per perhaps uh, he may not survive as the result of the injuries but when he came back to senses then he all uh, he, Im he immediately prayed that the wrath of Allah Almighty should be taken away from his enemies where else can you find such an example the ignorance of the Arabs those who used to fight uh, uh, on petty things and they were ready to kill one another and in the name of the honor they used to kill other people and this battle would continue for several years so these illiterate and ignorant people they were tamed so much uh, by the holy prophet وسلم, they became such people who are showing the mercy to other people and also he taught them the uh, good behavior of treating the non-believers even in the civilized world today we cannot see the examples of that as i said that innocent people disabled people, ladies, children, he stopped that no injury should be given to them, no harm should be given. In one battle, a child was inadvertently killed by someone in a battle. So the killer said that he was a Jewish person or a non-Muslim. He said, was he not a Muslim? You have committed great injustice. So this is a good example which was shown by the Holy Prophet ﷺ. So this is the example, which is also an example for those uh, so-called Islamic organizations, those who are shedding the bloods of innocent people. And this uh, is a very strong uh, rebuttal for those people, <coughs> those who criticize upon the Holy Prophet ﷺ that God forbid he gave the teaching of uh, extremism and terrorism. This is a strong rebuttal to these people. So now you see and ponder that uh, these people, those who are behaving like that from among the Muslims, do they have the right to attribute themselves to the Holy Prophet وسلم, who was mercy for, all, for the mankind? Are those people who are not directly involved in battles, those who are supporting them, are those people they have the right to attribute themselves to the mercy of mankind. It's a point worth considering. <coughs> the Holy Quran uh, mentions about uh, is the manifestation of the mercy of the Holy Prophet ﷺ, which is a guide for the all the people for all times. And so many people uh, criticize the Holy Quran. But in the teaching of the Holy Quran, if at any time the one mention of uh, punishment is there, so then, uh, so, so then it is mentioned that uh, the mercy of Allah Almighty actually encompasses everything. If uh, in the response to that war which was imposed upon Muslims, if the war is uh, th was there, there is nowhere the teaching that people should initiate the war. But for, if the war is imposed, then you have the rep uh, right to reply. So then, as I said, so there are certain uh, laws and rules that uh, innocent people the religious people and the children and the ladies, they should be given the protection. Their life has been protected, those who are not directly involved in battle. And if they are a prisoner of wars, and whatever leniency or concession you can give and set them free, that is also the one of the instruction. His mercy was going out to all the people, 
to all creation as a matter of fact as i mentioned in the beginning that his mercy was for the uh, his opponents and uh, it requires the goodness of the people of the believers and the non believers alike and uh, this is also the uh, reason of his being the mercy for mankind that in this age that a true follower of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been sent to explain the real nature of the love of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he that is the promised messiah alaihi salatu wasallam he has explained his beauties uh, so nicely hazrat musim alaihi salatu wasallam says that uh, he says that we have not sent you for a mercy to a particular uh, nation and explaining the point of rahmatullahi alamin he says that uh, you have not been sent for a specific people the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has not been sent but we have sent uh, for the purpose that you should become a mercy for the whole of mankind as he is the lord of all the uh, people similarly the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the messenger for the whole of mankind and similarly his mercy and his love and affection is for the whole of mankind in one place hazrat musi maud alaihi salatu wasallam says that qala allah taala wa ma ma arsalna ka illa rahmatan lil alamin Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran that O Prophet we have made you as a mercy for the whole of mankind and his being rahmatul lil alamin is according to the attribute of rahmaniyat because uh, and then he says that uh, this should be remembered that uh, the statement of every person is according to his ability whatever determination and objective is high according to that his uh, statement would be there and in the revelation of allah the same pattern is there the one who receives the revelation and the more he is uh, firm and exalted in his determination the level of the message would also be like that and the ability of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was <coughs> very extended very vast and high therefore that message which he was given that was also very high high and there is no other person who can be of his determination and his status and because his message was not for a limited and defined people rather it was regarding that allah almighty says kul inni rasulullah ilaikum jamia and and ma arsalna ka illa rahmatan lil alamin and this the, the area of his the scope of his mission is for the uh, all times who else can ever be a uh, brought against him or who can ever compete with him then the promise messiah alaihi salatu wasalam says that in surah fatiha the four attributes of allah almighty have been mentioned the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the perfect manifestation of all these attributes the first is rabbul alamin the master of the uh, uh, world and he was the manifestation of that as allah almighty says wa ma arsalna ka illa rahmatan lil alamin as allah almighty requires the rububiyat in general similarly the blessings of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his guidance was also for the whole of mankind and the second uh, attribute is rahman and he was also manifestation of this attribute because his ble- ble- blessing is there is no reward for for his blessings for his bounties ma salakum alayhi min ajrin i do not uh, need any a payment or reward as a result of that and then he was the manifestation of rahimiyat and the efforts which he did and his companions did and uh, this and the suffering that they underwent for the sake of islam and the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is mentioned uh, in the holy quran the word rahim has been used about the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then he was also manifestation of malik e yawmiddin 
and uh, that manifestation was beautifully shown on the day of the victory of Mecca and uh, these are the four attributes the mother attributes and the manifestation of all that was in the Holy Prophet وسلم, which has never taken place before and this is the blessing of the, <coughs> of the mercy of the Holy Prophet وسلم, that Allah Almighty has sent the Masih Maud and Imam Mahdi in this age who, uh, this, uh, who presented this uh, real teaching and he explained that as it is quite clear from these references which I have just read that how beautifully how beautifully he was mercy for the believers and the non-believers and he has explained this point and uh, the Allah Almighty who is the provider and the nourisher of the whole world he he appointed the Holy Prophet وسلم, as the mercy for the mankind as nothing is outside the scope of the blessing of Allah Almighty. So therefore, no other person is outside the domain of the mercy of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. So Allah, uh, the, the Holy Prophet ﷺ says that I am distributing all these blessings without any reward, whether you accept it or not. And this is for everyone. And if Rahimiyat is uh, because of some hard work and labor, so the Holy Prophet, the, his companions, the benefits, uh, the special benefit which they got, <coughs> <coughs> these people, they became full of morals um, at a time when they were without any morals. And then and then Allah Almighty has got the attribute is Malik, that he is a master of the day of judgment. And this was manifested uh, during the lifetime of the Holy Prophet وسلم, on the day of the victory of Mecca. And those bloodthirsty enemies, uh, he said, La tasriba alaykum al yom, that today there is no reprimand against you. Today is the day of mercy. And his uh, mercy and uh, forgiveness, it covered everything. And even those who were staunch armies, those who run away from Mecca, and those who had uh, gone to the heights of torture and enmity, and they, uh, they did not expect any forgiveness because of their uh, crimes. To, whom, to those people as well, he, he mentioned that uh, uh, they are forgiven. Among those people who run away, there was one Ikrama. And his wife, uh, his wife came and he sought the forgiveness uh, for uh, her husband. And she went, uh, um, uh, ran after Ikrama and uh, told him that there is no need to run away. And uh, uh, why are you running away from such a gracious and kind and uh, forgiving person? And he said, surprisingly, that uh, is it the case that all my sins are forgiven and they are going to be forgiven? And uh, she said, yes, it, it will be forgiven. The Holy Prophet وسلم, said that you will be forgiven. He did not convert a single person by force. That He said that uh, you, uh, you may remain in your faith, whatever you have. You can live in Mecca, you will be free. But only one condition is <coughs> that you will have to abide by the laws. So in every situation... Uh, he always gave forth mercy and mercy alone. So this is the messenger of Allah who was in every situation, in, at all times he was mercy and kindness for the mankind. Those people who uh, put the allegation against him that he taught terrorism and extremism, uh, now those people who are attributed to the Holy Prophet وسلم, these people have to analyze their situations that whatever they are doing is it the And uh, they should see that this example shown by the Holy Prophet وسلم, Can you see such an example elsewhere? And if you, you can't see the example of that anywhere, so then uh, you are certainly disturbing the soul of the Holy Prophet وسلم. So those people who are the member of the Jamaat of the Masih Muhammadi, it is our responsibility that today we should spread this mercy and kindness in the world. And we should let the people know that the person whom you consider your enemy he is much more than that. He is keen for your welfare. Today the salvation lies in coming into his lap. The solution of all the problems is by following the teaching of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. And, uh, the <coughs> and this Ramatul Alameen is the guarantee of the peace of all the people. May that the people of the world, they understand that he is the messenger of peace. And uh, Allah Almighty also enable us to discharge our responsibility. And... Uh, 
and we should create this uh, feeling and understanding in our life that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is accepted as the mercy for mankind, and he is the one who is showing the path of the salvation and of the of peace. Now we are going to enter into a silent prayer. In the in your prayers, pray for this chalsa to that it may become full of blessings in every respect, and we may be able to achieve those objectives for which the Hazrat Musiya Maudullah Salatu Salam started the system. In these days, we should try to create that condition in our heart, which is necessary uh, for a believer and which enables us to get the pleasure of Allah Almighty. We should be spreading peace and harmony during this chalsa and make it a part of our life afterwards. Wherever the Ahmadis are being tortured, Allah Almighty may create the moments of uh, relief for them and uh, betterment. And uh, uh, in um, various, uh, in all the countries, they hold their jalsas one way or the other. But for more than 30 years, the Ahmadis are uh, deprived from this right of holding their jalsa. And uh, these people who are committing crime in the name of Allah and the Messenger, uh, if there it is not possible for them to come to the guidance, then Allah Almighty may remove those people from our way. And uh, these people should be made to understand the reality of the uh, of the mercy of the Holy Prophet Allah Almighty may protect the uh, Palestinians and protect them from all atrocities and also protect them from committing any crime. And Israel should also remember, looking at their own history, that the tyrant rule does not remain forever. And their salvation also lies in this thing, that they should try to be included among his pious servants. And today, the means of that is to accept the Messiah of Muhammad. <laughs> and uh, and the people should follow the path of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Almighty enable all the people to follow his example, those who live in the world. These people uh, may be enabled to believe the promised Messiah and they should all come and become united in one faith. May, may we are able to see this uh, thing happening. Now we join in prayer. Amin. Salam alaikum warahmatullah. Nara-e takbir. Nara-e takbir. Mosre insaniyat. Mosre insaniyat. Islam e ahmadiyat. Islam e ahmadiyat. Gulam e madki. Gulam e madki. Hazrat Khalifa Al-Mazih Al-Khamas Hazrat Khalifa Al-Mazih Al-Khamas Nara-e-Takbir 